I don't know if you can see me. I think so. Here I am at Rongpu Monastery, about two hours walk from Mount Everest. It is the highest monastery in the world, and I'm sleeping here for the next two nights. Out here, Tibet becomes a completely different place. 300 kilometers southwest of the capital, life is quiet and the landscape desolate. Apart from the roads they've built, even the Chinese presence seems less. To see another car on the road is a rarity. The distances go on forever, and topping mountain passes of over 5,000 meters above sea level becomes routine. Each time, the summit is marked by bristling prayer flags placed in the most precarious of places and which the Tibetans believe launch prayers and mantras into the air to be spread to all living things by the wind. Our guides would stop the car whenever they saw the flags had come down and we spent considerable time tying them back up. How are you feeling? Well, a little off, but all right, going down the road towards Everest, we stopped up here with a bunch of prayer flags. We're good 4,000 some odd meters in the air. Heading down to Latsi. Heading down to Latsi, which will be nice. And uh, yeah, doing all right so far. From this point on, we were heading for the Himalayas, one of the most unforgiving places on Earth. Our first stop on the way to Everest was Latsi, a small friendly town visited mostly by travelers going to and from Nepal. As usual, we were made very comfortable and were given the last proper meals we would have until we were through the mountains. All right, well, here we are in uh, Latsi enjoying some very nice lunch. <laughs> After this, we head on to Tengri, and after to Tengri, we head on to Rongpu, where we'll be staying for hopefully the next two nights. And, uh, and it's on to Jang. And then it's out of Tibet. So far, so good. Straddling both sides of the Himalayas, the Everest Nature Preserve covers 34,000 square kilometers of land. Altitude doesn't seem to be affecting me at the moment. Possibly because it's waiting till tonight to strike, but I feel I feel very good actually. Just a few hours up the road, when we caught our first glimpse of the tallest mountain on the planet. Well, that's that's unbelievable. Yeah, that's it. Well, I don't rightly know, but I do know that off in the distance all the way over there with all the clouds coming off is Mount Everest. Oh, really? Yeah. Is, was that somewhere you were intending to go, or is that just... Yeah, we were intending to go there. Oh. To be honest, where the hell else are you going to go out here? That's right. So. Wow. That's where we're headed, right there. Although we were still hours away from the base camp, Chinese rules stated that we would need yet another permit to get any closer. This is Tingri. This is the place where we need to buy our ticket to continue any closer into the uh, Everest Nature Preserve. Nestled out of the wind and overlooking a sweeping plain, Tingri is littered with the ruins of buildings which were destroyed by the Nepalese at the end of the 18th century. The town is bordered by towering Himalayan peaks and acts as a final breather before the long bumpy climb up to Everest. I'm 
Having secured our permits, we pressed on up the road, twisting backwards and forwards, and once again scaling truly dizzying heights. This pass. Bangla. Ah. First, you gotta drive four hours up this road, and you're already wishing to God you were dead then. Well, that four hours is the final four hours. It really did like 15 hours before that. Yeah. <laughs> the 15's not so bad. The four at the end is. Slowly, the gigantic white shapes on the horizon inch closer. But the uncomfortable drive seems never ending. When we finally reach the top of the Pangla Pass, however, we are presented with a stunning view of five of the world's tallest peaks, with Everest itself standing proudly over them. Sight of the mountain, dipping in and out of view, became a familiar one. Before we knew it, we turned a corner and found ourselves staring straight down a valley at the north face of Mount Everest. I don't know if you can see me. Here I am at Rongpu Monastery, about two hours walk from Mount Everest. It's getting dark, so we're gonna hunker down over there. There's no electricity. We've got candles and lots and lots of blankets. I don't feel too bad, the altitude is okay. Um, a little bit out of breath, just walking 30 seconds from the room, but apart from that, I'm okay. There's a dog. Hello, dog. Oh well. <laughs> um, it's the coolest place I've ever been. But as night began to fall, so did the temperature. Just an hour later, the whole area began to feel very lonely. And with the mercury creeping past the minus 20 mark, we sought shelter inside the monastery. Rongpu Monastery, uh, near the base of Mount Everest. We're about seven kilometers or so actually from the, the first base camp. And that's where we'll hopefully we'll be visiting tomorrow. Uh, we're staying in the monastery guest house. And no, all these blankets aren't for comedic value, which is actually that friggin' cold here. Uh, so I'm sleeping in all my clothes, including my boots, <laughs> and my gloves, and my big warm coat. So, right out the window there is Everest itself, and it's a beautiful sight. We're all damn glad to be here. Uh, so, we'll be here tomorrow, uh, and hopefully tomorrow night we'll see how our breathing goes. Right now, we feel fine breathing-wise, I assume. Uh, no headaches or anything. So, I'm not coughing up any pink stuff. That's good. So. This is where we'll be for the night. If I remember correctly, I saw a sign 
uh, back at the checkpoint that we first had to stop at, which said uh, that during the day it was going to be six degrees Celsius and nine is going to be. Oh, hello. Thank you very much. More blankets. Here is fine. Thank God we got more blankets. I was a little concerned with the four I already have on top. Luckily, we should be okay. <laughs> Uh, there's no electricity. There is electric light right there, but it doesn't work. So I got a candle, and I got a candle. So we are back in the 1800s for damn sure. Not be anywhere else except maybe somewhere essentially. Anyway, hopefully we'll not freeze to death in the night or get eaten by Yeti. And we'll uh, see you again in the morning.